All right, folks, so today we have a 2008 Lexus RX350 with a 3.5 Toyota engine. And today we are going to be doing a throttle body cleaning on this car. Uh, the throttle body is right over here. And for some other work, I just had to take up the battery. So I just um, kept the battery out of the car for now. So the easiest way to do it from my point of view would be to just take off the uh, air box, take off the mass air sensor over there, mass air fuel sensor, take off some of the tubing. And again, you just got to be really careful when you're taking off um, tubing or plastic, anything plastic on older cars because um, with heat cycles and like the weather as it is, again, we're in Canada, so uh, weather does get pretty cold. So yeah, so just got to be careful so it's not like brittle, it doesn't break on your hands and stuff like that if need use some pain penetrating fluid um, it's gonna probably help clips and um, joints coming up easier so a quick reason why we need to do throttle body cleaning uh, cleaning on these cars is because these cars are direct injection so what happens is over time in any GDI uh, engine like over time you're gonna have carbon buildup um, around the throttle body. It might produce a sluggish reaction when you press on the gas, it might take a, might be a delay for you to like, you know, actually move on, stuff like that. So again, I mean, it's not obviously, it's, it's not gonna throw up a check engine light. It's not gonna throw up anything, any major codes on the vehicle. But over time, you might feel like the car might get a bit sluggish and stuff like that. So generally, people recommend getting the throttle body cleaning done once every, uh, 90,000 kilometers to 50,000 miles, 60,000 miles, something like that. So yeah, today we'll just be going through these steps and um, ways and procedures and how to clean a throttle body. So I sprayed some lubricant, some penetrating fluid on the on the connections. I sprayed it on the joints, the bolts as well. So, so it would soak in and um, make it easier for me to when I'm unbolting this stuff. Uh, also, just wanted to point out this uh, throttle body is not a drive-by cable, so it doesn't have physically have any cable coming from and connected to your uh, acceleration uh, accelerator pedal that's gonna move the mechanically move the throttle plate. It has an electrical motor that's on the back end. Uh, We'll get to see a better picture when we have this stuff taken off. So what happens is when you press the gas pedal, uh, the electrical signals go to your mo motor and the motor basically operates your throttle plate. Other than that, there's also two connections for your coolant. So in, in the winter times, uh, just so the throttle plate doesn't freeze in, into its place, uh, the coolant run through it. So it warms up the throttle plate. So if there is a chance that it's stuck, you would not it would uh, basically make sure it's not stuck. All right, folks, so as you can see, I take a few parts apart. Um, so obviously this is the air box that uh, goes on top of the car on, on top like this. There is, just show you how it goes. So it sits on the uh, bottom of the air box and the filter goes in between. There's a screw right over here. Right on the opposite side, there's another screw there, there are three vacuum ports, one, two, one, one, two, three, three vacuum ports on the air box itself. And obviously you have the, you have the a mass airflow sensor right over there. Um, to take off the uh, middle tubing, as you can see, there's like one that connects the air box itself. This one connects to the air box itself, this one connects to the throttle body. But in order to take this um, piece out, you might need to also take out some of the, some of the shrouding. Uh, some of the pieces that puts air into the... So I had to take off this uh, top plate, top plastic piece. Underneath this, there, this along with a few other hoses, um, plumbing that go puts air into the air box for it to be clean. Uh, I had to take that off so I could pull that off. And as you can see, you have a lot of space over here right now. And obviously, the throttle plate is right over there. 
you can already see how much um, carbon buildup you have, like just around the edges. Yes. See, see, that stuff should be moderately clean, not like perfectly clean, but like at least moderately clean, because like this is this is a decent amount of buildup. So um, let me quickly just clean it up with some um, uh, travel body cleaner and a, and a shop rag and I'll check back in a bit. So this is what I'm using to clean the travel body. CRC travel body clean uh, along with um, spray some into your uh, into your rag microfiber and try to get my, most stuff the carbon out if not. I'll try to just do the best job you can because uh, obviously it's going to help with your engine performance. Not performance, just uh, drivability in general. Alright folks, so I did um, I already cleaned it. I tried the best I could to get as much um, as much carbon off. Here's what my rag looks like. This is just one side. It's pretty grimy. It's the other side. Yeah, again, I mean, these cleanings should be routine. Uh, every time you're doing your spark plugs or the car has more than 100,000 kilometers, just give it a nice clean. It's going to help the car run better, drive that much better. Yeah, here you go. So right now I'm going to put everything back one by one. Same process, I took everything off. The middle piece uh, with the baffle is going to come in right over here. Then uh, some of this cladding is going to go. Then I'm going to sit this down firmly. There's two bolts that, that connects uh, over here. One and then two over here. And one of obviously over here. So I just wanted to give a, give a quick update before I button everything up. I put on this shroud. There's one, two three uh, screws underneath this plastic cover. This plastic cover is held on by four clips. One, two, three, and four. Four plastic clips. So this shroud connects to the airbox, the bottom piece of the airbox. There's still three, one, two, three vacuum lines that's gonna go into the airbox, the top of, the, the top of it. Other than that, there's also a bottom piece of the air shroud that goes goes under the battery tray and comes up from inside the air box. So uh, just make sure everything's kind of tight and in place and how it's supposed to be. This uh, this tubing is uh, connected by, I just said this bolt up because this is all removed from this piece. And um, yeah, this is goes to the throttle, uh, throttle body over here. Just tighten this up. Other than that, I'm just going to put, the, put the top piece of the airbox right over here and then we should be good to go. Okay. Alright, so everything's back in order. I just started the car up. Everything looks good, sounds good. There's no check engine lights or anything like that. So for these Toyota throttle bodies, they don't, don't, they don't need any kind of uh, calibration or synchronization or anything like that. I know for other brands, for, for example, Nissans, Hondas and Mitsubishis, they might have a different procedure. So this job might not be as easy on those vehicles as it is in this vehicle, as I just showed you. Um, again, if you're trying to do this job on a different vehicle, make sure you have your proper resources, you did enough research, stuff like that. But other than that, for Toyotas, it's a pretty easy job. You can do this by yourself as well, as I just did it by myself. Um, yeah, it wasn't too hard. It was pretty easy. Just uh, I just tightened everything up, all the bolts for the batteries. Uh, shrouds, stuff like that. Just gonna make sure all the vacuum lines are plugged in, everything. So that's it. Looks pretty good, sounds good. We're out.